Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Obicast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you latest insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. In this episode, we'll discuss the role of cobra of supplementation in lambs. Discuss this in more detail. I'm joined by my colleague, Michael Gosting. Michael describes some of the typical signs we see of cobalt deficiency in lambs. We discuss supplementation strategies and the pros and cons of each, and how the type of cobalt contained in the supplement may affect the lambs' ability to absorb it. We finish up with Michael encouraging producers to check whether or not they get the performance benefit from supplementing with minerals. We start off, however, with Michael describing how cobalt supplementation helps lamb performance. The, the lambs themselves actually don't probably need cobalt as such. Um, it's the little bugs inside in their stomach that synthesize vitamin B12. They're the chaps that need the cobalt. So really when we're giving a, co- a lamb cobalt or a sheep cobalt, we're actually, what we're trying to do is give that cobalt to the bugs inside in their rumen. Um, those bugs then, uh, they require that cobalt in the synthesis, uh, which is the process by which they make uh, vitamin B12. And it's the B12 actually that's quite important um, for the sheep, you know, in terms of, 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 of their, their well-being, their abilities to thrive and stuff. So, so that's the reason why lambs need cobalt. In Ireland, um, I suppose we have an awful lot of soils which are, are low in cobalt, naturally low in cobalt. So the, the sheep, in particular lambs, don't get enough cobalt from the grazing forage. Uh, in some areas, we have sufficient cobalt um, in, this, in the soil and in the herbage then, but we have manganese, um, uh, which either inhibits the uptake of, of cobalt into the, the, the grass plant or, or basically um, uh, in, in, in for the sheep to be able to digest it. Yeah. So what are the typical signs we're looking for? Like how does it manifest in lambs that have cobalt deficiency? Yeah, so look at in general, um, I mean, the, the, the classical um, symptoms of severe cobalt deficiency are what we call pine. So that, that's just basically sheep that is pining. Um, usually, in, again, in lambs, we don't see it so much in older sheep. Um, and, and basically, they're just really doing poorly, dried out looking, you know, emaciated, um, thin sheep. Um, Really, I suppose it's it's it, it's very late by the time it gets to that stage. Most farmers won't see that because they they'll have have reacted uh, long before it gets to that stage. The, the 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 typical symptoms very often that we see the first one of the first symptoms um, that we would recognise in terms of cobalt deficiency is probably scabby ears, um, you know, and lambs that are a little bit dry looking, um, you know, and, and and just not thriving. And basically, what farmers will do in that situation is they they'll give the lambs a cobalt supplement. Um, and then, then we see that the lambs um, improving. So, like, it's something we're going to see more of as we approach weaning or have weaned at this stage. It's going to manifest itself more in lambs. Look, you mentioned there about supplementation. There's a number of different strategies, Michael, in terms of getting cobalt into lambs. You might explain them a little bit more to us, and we might just discuss the frequency of them as well. Yeah. So, okay, the, the cobalt again. Let me just say, like, because the cobalt isn't. Um, used by the sheep itself, it's used by the bugs. We need the cobalt in the rumen um, and we need it there, you know, regularly for the bugs to be able to synthesize this vitamin B12. So, you know, even if lambs have lots of cobalt in their blood or, you know, um, circle, it, it, it's of no benefit to them. It needs to be in the rumen. Um, we need to get that cobalt into the rumen of the lambs um, and have it there. And, and that's basically what doesn't happen, I suppose, in a sheep in terms of a storage, from a storage point of view, you know, it, there, there's nowhere in the room and for cobalt to be stored for long periods of time. So for that reason, we need a constant supply um, of cobalt in, enabled in order to enable these bugs to, to facilitate um, or synthesize this vitamin B12. Um, so really what we're talking about is, is there's, there's a number of different options. Um, they're all oral, really, um, because we're trying to get it into the rumen. So the first one we have is we have a, a drench type product. Um, so some people in the industry call that a tonic. And, and that's basically where you give them a drench. Um, it contains cobalt, uh, you know, sometimes other minerals and vitamins added to it as well. And, and that gives the, the bogs in the rumen a source of cobalt for a period of time, which is generally days. Um, you know, and, and they synthesize vitamin B12 then for a period of time after that. And generally, we would be saying if you're, if you're orally dosing with a drench type product, 
probably about two weeks at the outside three week intervals we'd need to be going with um, for, for us to have a continual supply um, for the bugs to be able to continually supply, uh, synthesize this B12 and to have enough B12 floating around in the bloodstream um, for the sheep to be able to perform at its optimum. I suppose the next uh, option then really from a cobalt supplementation is to, to supply meal, uh, concentrate feed with, with cobalt in it and again look at uh, obviously, there's a cost to that. I mean, for people who are meal feeding anyway, that is a, a useful way of getting cobalt into the sheep. Um, but I mean, it wouldn't be an option financially to um, feed concentrates just to carry the cobalt into the sheep on a daily basis. But obviously, with concentrate feeding, if that's done daily, then the sheep have a daily supply of, of cobalt. Um, and then I suppose the other one that we have is we have boluses and there's lots of different types of boluses on the market big ones small ones long acting ones short acting ones ones that contain different types of cobalt and the idea of these boluses is that they lodge in the in the rumen or the reticulum and and that they basically release the cobalt um, uh, gradually over a period of time and i suppose then there, there are some options in terms of pasture dusting um uh, and, and various different um, strategies like that. But I think by and large, they, they are, are not often used um, and, and they're probably a little bit more complicated um, and can be quite expensive. You know, there are, you know, if we go back maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, there was a number of trials done where people were basically um, taking soil sampling samples, making sure there wasn't a lot of manganese there to, to tie it up and then spreading cobalt in what was termed a hospital pasture. So you, you'd apply cobalt to one or two fields and you'd graze your sheep periodically in that then for them to get a, a dose of cobalt. Um, you know, so look at that is an option, but I think it's not the way these are. Really, I think for most people where it's at is it's either a drench, um, a bolus, you know, or, or, or concentrate feed. <laughs> Just like the, the key thing we would take from our microphone, the drench is the frequency of that drench going in. It really needs to be every two weeks because it's that initial kick and then it's excreted out the excess from it. So the frequency is very important with that. Yeah, and, and I suppose that's the challenge. And that's that's why I suppose, you know, very often people will give a drench, maybe give it again a month later or six weeks later. And what you see is a huge performance dip inside in that. Um, you know, even on one of our farms in in, in research farms in Athenry, right, where where cobalt deficiency, uh, where we are cobalt deficient, um, Phil Creighton, who is the researcher there, would say that you know if he doesn't go in every two weeks with cobalt, they can see the dip. They're weighing very regularly the lambs there, and they can see the dip um, after that two week period. So really, look at the ideal is two weeks. Um, at the outset, I'd be saying three weeks. Um, you know, and that'd be that that'd be worth that with with an oral drench. Michael, in the different supplements, we see different formulations of cobalt present. Does that have any effect on the absorption or the ability of the lamb to take in that cobalt? Yeah, Kieran, look at so that there's lots of different um, cobalt uh, supplements, and a lot of those supplements are based on different formulations of cobalt. So we have um, generally in drenches, we see things like cobalt sulfate. And and we know that cobalt sulfate is, is, is very available. So the cobalt part of that is very available to the bugs in the room. And we, we also have um, some products that contain ionic cobalt. And again, that's just pure cobalt. Um, and, and we know that that's also available in the room. And uh, there are some products out there, I suppose, that, that um, contain things like cobalt oxide or various other um, formulations. And I, I suppose the question uh, that we would have is, are those available at a room and pH, um, you know, of, of, of 5.8 or, 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 or 6 or even 5.4, um, those, those type of room and pHs that we see in lambs. And, and I suppose, look at, for most of these cobalt um, sources, they have to be approved to be, be included in feed. Um, I suppose the question would I have then is, you know, how effective are they in a, in a pasture-based setting at, at supplying cobalt where lambs aren't being meal fed. Okay, so we know that where lambs are getting meal, the pH in the room and drops slightly, you know, and maybe some of those products become more available. Um, you know, certainly we would know the ionic and the cobalt sulfate are, are very available in grass fed lambs and, and, and there's no issues there. I suppose there would be a small little bit of a question mark maybe over some of the other products. And while I suppose there, there, there's limited data available to, to um, support that, uh, whether it, it, it does or doesn't, I think what people need to do is 
is test to see whether the product is working on their farm with their feeding system because it, it'll depend. Some people might feed a lot of meal um, to lambs and get very good results from a particular type of cobalt supplement in terms of, of, of eliminating the issues that they have around cobalt deficiency. And somebody else who may be on a predominantly grass-based system may not get the same um, benefit from the same type of cobalt supplement. And, and really, I think the only way that people can, can identify um, you know, without going to an awful lot of cost and doing an awful lot of, of, of bloods and, 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 and laboratory type analysis is to basically just treat half of the lambs um, with a particular product and treat the other half with a different type of product or don't treat them at all, um, preferably don't treat them at all and see are you getting a performance benefit because that's what it's about. This is about getting a performance benefit. There's no point in, in, in supplementing any sheep with minerals if you're not getting a performance benefit, extra growth rate, um, extra lambs, you know, better pregnancy rates, those type of things, you know. So we, we hear an awful lot about people, you know, using supplements and, you know, do they need them? Um, are they working for them? Do they have the, the various different elements in the correct formulations to combat the type of deficiencies that are on that farm? So I suppose the easiest way to do this is if you have a, a, a field of, of lambs here, um, both weaning, we're on a cobalt deficient farm, um, bring in your lambs, every second lamb coming up the race, um, we give uh, the, the, the dose, the, the mineral supplement to it. Every, every other lamb then we don't, we mark them, put a red spray on the ones that have been treated, blue spray on the ones that don't, do some weights, weigh maybe 20, 30 red colored lambs, 20, 30, um, of the blue lambs, mark them so that you can reweigh them again two weeks later um, and see, see what your performance is over a period of time, um, especially with some of these, you know, longer lasting um, products that last for maybe two months or three months or four months, you know, see are we getting bang for our buck. Like. And, I, and I think that's important for people to do because there's a lot of money tied up in mineral supplementation. And if you need mineral supplementation and you are genuinely, your sheep are, are mineral deficient, then that's important that that's done. Um, but it's also important that it's done correctly and, and that it works for you on your farm. Certainly something very important at the moment, Michael, in the post weaning period. Thank you very much for your time today. No bother. Thank you, Kieran. We're going to finish up at this point. Again, it's something timely that we need to focus on on farms at the moment. We don't want to see that performance dip that associated with cobalt deficiency. So if it is an issue on your farm, it's something you need to attend to and you need to attend to it regularly, particularly if you're given a drench. That interval in between has a big effect on it. Again, as Michael indicated at the end, it's no harm to check whether or not you're getting a performance benefit from supplemental minerals or if the particular type you're using is working efficiently on your farm. That's it for me for this episode. Again, for any updates on the sheep program, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chocolate Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and you can listen in to any of our episodes.